Greetings and welcome to In-Depth and BK Ronstar. Owner operator at Reputation Management Caribbean, corporate and crisis communications expert, and much more is Lisa Ann Joseph. She shared some insight earlier this year at the inaugural Trinidad and Tobago Disaster Risk Management Conference and Expo. Now, the presentation on communicating during a crisis was timely then and is still quite applicable. I'm grateful for her scheduling that allows us to speak more on this matter right now. Thank you very much for making the time. It's been a little while in coming. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? I'm good, good thank you. And I will say good as opposed to excellent because I've been diving down the rabbit hole of some of the publications that you've been putting out. So on this one, we're speaking a little bit about from chaos to calm, to use your words. Mm. But how do you kind of make some of those differentiations between communicating during normal times? and communicating during a crisis? Well, you have to prepare for a crisis in the normal times so that when the crisis happens, you can be in a better position. So that, that's basically it. So I try to get organizations to prepare in the good times, to prepare the groundwork, to, pre to seed their messages, to get everything out in the good times. So that when the hard times or the bad times reach, they are better prepared. Do they always do that? No. But it's it's part of what we do. Okay. And does the word crisis mean different things to different people? Yes. Yes. Some well, crisis is anything that can affect the reputation of an organization or its people. That is what it means in general. But some people feel that only if there's a, a death, an injury, a, you know, a, 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 catast a catastrophic situation, then do they see it as, oh gosh, we're in a crisis. Some people don't. Some people feel that only, you know, if anything little happens to the organization, that, oh my gosh, we're in a crisis. So it, it tends to differ for different people, but generally, Anything that affects your organization from a reputational standpoint in a negative way can be seen as a crisis. And that term that you just used a little earlier in terms of seeding your message, mm -hmm. what does that mean and what does that entail? It, it, it's, it's in the good times. It's like, okay, you're building currency. You know, when, when you have to build a credit, over time, now, you know, as adults, we grow up and we, we tend to, to say, okay, we need to build credit in order to get loans, in order to do this, start our business and all of that. It's building good currency with your stakeholders so that when you, when you do that over time in a crisis, you can now draw down from that currency and people can actually begin to think of you differently or to say that, no, 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 no. This person has good credit, therefore, whatever is happening in, in the crisis situation, they will, they, there's no way that what we're hearing can be true. Let's hear and wait for them. Let's listen to what they have to say because that person has built credit over time. So therefore, why, why would I believe other things instead of waiting for them? So, so that is really the, the, the crux of, of the whole um, crisis situation. Of course, there are other things operationally and so that you, you have to deal with to come out of the crisis. But when you deal with it from a communication perspective, you're looking at how do we ensure that we either shape the narrative or be part of the narrative. What you don't want is to not be part of the narrative at all. Can you, be, can you say that you're helping to shape the narrative of what you do is to put out a press release. That is Sorry. the worst way of looking at it. And as a media person, you would appreciate exactly what I say. Listen, putting out a press release is passy. And I say that, you know, uh, with no hesitation. Coming out of COVID, it has taught all of us 
is that we have to have a human connection, that we have to speak to people, that we have to put out content, that we have to generate the type of content where it's stills and video. We have to have interviews. We have to do media circuit. We have to get out there. We have to talk to people, you know, talk to our stakeholders. The press release, while it's very important, it's critical to the process, but it is a backup tool that you send out to ensure that you have that written component of what you're saying and what you're doing about it. But it's not the be all and end all. A couple of years ago, we could have gotten away with it. Not now. And there's so many, there's so many avenues for individuals to create content. So, and so because of those avenues, people are bigger consumers. So they're looking to hear what, you, what it is you have to say. And I like the fact that you use the word talk because sometimes it feels as though when you send a press release out, okay, well, I'm saying this, but at the same time, I'm kind of exclusive, I'm, I'm unac unaccessible. Mm -hmm. But that talk, mm -hmm. talk happens both ways. Yeah. So there's a level of engagement, which is one of the things that you would have spoken about. And they use that term, true engagement. Mm -hmm. What does true engagement mean? Mm -hmm. True engagement is intentional engagement. What, when you think of when you are intentional about something, you think through what that person wants from me when it's intentional. So same thing with communication. Communication is a two-way street. And you have a sender and you have a receiver. So you have to ensure that your message goes through to the receiver. How do I know that the receiver has received the message? When they tell me back what I just said so that the lines of communication are open. Now, if I'm intentional about it, I will ensure that I'm speaking to the receiver in a way that they understand. I wouldn't use technical language. I wouldn't use you know, difficult terms that they will not understand. I wouldn't use things that, that you know, are out of their reach. I will use it in a way that they understand and I want them to either do something or just be informed of it. So that's intentional communication that you, you have to try in the whole crisis comms or the crisis management process. We're going to talk a little more about that, but we're intentionally taking a short <laughs> break as we are speaking with the Managing Director of Reputation Management Caribbean, Elisa and Joseph. Stay with us. We'll return after this. Welcome back. We are speaking with Lisa Ann Joseph of Reputation Management Caribbean and looking at the fact that there needs to be different ways of getting the message across, especially when we're looking at disasters. What are some of those ways that we help to share that one message between an audience that isn't a monolith, that isn't uh, homogenous? Mm -hmm. So disasters can be anything, yeah? In you a crisis. Let's you, just you, take you it set in your, a crisis. You set your parameters <laughs> and move with that. Yeah. So let's just say in any type of crisis situation, you have to ensure that your message gets to your audiences. How? Now, if I'm sending you a message, um, if I'm communicating with you, you may be a particular type of stakeholder, will be different to another type of stakeholder. Your, the response, the way you will receive my message from, from the organization will be different to how you will receive it from, uh, by another person. Therefore, I have to ensure the onus is on me as the organization to ensure that the same message is communicated to the different audiences in different ways, using different channels on a multiple, in a multiple approach and over a period of time. Because if I'm talking to you as an organization now about something, you may not pay attention now. You may pay attention a month from now. So if my campaign is just one month, um, the life cycle is one month, I may not get to all my audiences within a month. It may be that I have to repeat the same campaign over a period of time until it reaches the audiences. Think of when you are looking at something on, on social media. You're, you, you know, you're going through social media and you're like, 
Mm, okay, this interests me. Oh, I may not paid, have paid attention, no, but perhaps when I'm in another space, I will pay attention. So I have, as the organization, I have to have a multi-pronged approach to all my different audiences because you have to tell the same message in different ways to different people. That is how people receive messages. You can't, there's no one cap fits all. And that is a, a, a mistake that we make as organizations. We feel that, you know, it's one, one blast and that's it. And that's especially in a crisis situation, you can't afford to do that. There's a reason why you're communicating in a, why you are communicating in a crisis. And therefore, the onus is on you to get to those audiences. It's not them to reach out to us. And that's another mistake we make. We feel that as organizations, they have to come to us. No, we have to go out to them, especially if it's in a crisis. But don't we lose our power and our authority if we reach out to the other communities as opposed to having them reach out to us? No, as a matter of fact, you gain more. But sometimes people are just lazy and, and they tend to, to just, you know, they, they say, okay, we have a, uh, we have a limited budget. We have, you know, limited resources. We have this, we have that, all the excuses. Um, but there are always ways of reaching audiences in different ways and over a period of time. You can stagger your communication. If one community, if you have to, to treat with several communities, you know that this one community will not be ready to get your messages um, until the, the following month because of something else is going on in the environment. What you could do, you can, you can stagger your messages. So there are ways of approaching it that is multi-pronged. And you say that and it sounds so simple and so easy, but easy <laughs> don't always mean done, mm -mm. Does, doesn't always mean implemented. No. But with regard to that reaching out, and you spoke in the first half about doing things before a crisis, because sometimes the crisis, especially if you don't have a, a strategy to go to, and this is something that we worked on, this is something that we know so everybody knows how it is they fit in in that communication process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you see people scrambling. But how important is it to have stakeholder communities, the people that you would be reaching out to? How important is it for them to have access to help craft responses, to help say, okay, well, if X takes place, this is what we think will work in our community because we know what the community needs. We have an idea of some of the ills who we can reach out to. Bring them in, bring them in. So remember, we spoke about intentional communication. That's part of intentional communication. If I'm, if I am an organization that operates within a particular community, I need to find out and, and that I will have crises. It's inevitable. The nature of my organization is that there will be crisis situations. So let's accept that and, and you know, know that there's a responsibility that, that we have not only to our shareholders, our stakeholders, our employees, our customers, the government, whoever you, you treat with, but for the community or and the community. Therefore, and you have to treat with them because they may be affected based on what, you know, the nature of, of, of your business. Bring them in, talk to them in the good times, not in the bad times, bring them in, let them understand the work that you do, you know, do a tour with them and, and but over time, you know, begin to cultivate a relationship with them and understand their needs and what they expect from you in a crisis as well. Have those difficult conversations, have that engagement in the good times and keep the, the relationship alive. As I say, a cult, when you cultivate relationships, it's not a one-off thing, it's over time. You know, it's like courting, courting, two people courting. This is something that, that you want to have a particular outcome. So you want to keep that relationship with the community and nurture the community over time and understand the needs of the community because there may be um, uh, 
issues within the community that you can treat with. Uh, persons with disabilities, if there's an issue within the community and there's a crisis, how are you going to treat with, the, with those vulnerable persons within that community? You need to know who they are and where they are up front in the good times and have a relationship and know, you know, really understand who they are. So when you look into those things, you find that it's more intentional in the approach they would have come in and they would have um, been a part of it. So in a crisis situation, they can be one of your best advocates. So when the rest of the country may be coming down on you for whatever reason, the community that you have nurtured over time um, can be the ones that are saying, hey, these are good people. This is a, this is a good organization. And, and they can rally around you and help you get through that crisis situation so that things can continue. And especially when you're looking at reputation, because a reputation is something that you work so hard to build from the ground up mm -hmm. many times, but it's the easiest and it's the fastest thing to go. Yeah. There's actually uh, research that has been done. It says it takes seven years to build a brand and it can take one incident to destroy it. That's why I don't like to read as much sometimes, you know, these things will be a little depressing. <laughs> but even then, looking at efficiency of efforts, because one thing coming to mind is working with partners in the community and they're saying, okay, well, most of us, this, this community, for different reasons, might be vegan, vegetarian, hampers going, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't contain stuff like corned beef and sausages. And this kind of thing, to, to, just to bring it down to the, uh, as plain and, and simple as, and then from there we can scale it up. But if there's one thing that you wanted people to come away from thinking about communication during a crisis, what would that thing be? Prepare, prepare, prepare. Prepare, prepare in the good times. And if you don't prepare, then you may have to reap the repercussions uh, in the crisis. Now, some people have to go through a crisis to learn from those mistakes. So when, when a crisis happens, learn from those mistakes and then put plans into to action for the next one, to prepare for the next one. Because, you know, it's organization. So things happen over time. So you get one crisis, you, you get over that and you move into the next one. But learn from what has happened. Also, learn from your neighbors. You know, they, they say, you know, when your, your house, neighbor when your neighbor fire. house is on fire, wet your own. And not only neighbor houses on fire, things that are happening internationally as well, we need to take note of it as organizations and know that it can happen to us because we have a track record of those types of issues. So, you know, when your neighbor's house is on fire, wet your own and make sure that you put the plans into place. Don't leave your communications to chance. Don't leave it to, oh gosh, I went to school with DK. So when he comes calling as, as a member of the media to have an interview with me as the CEO, um, I could tell him what I want to say and what I don't want to say. DK's agenda and my agenda as the CEO are two different things. I, and, and all of a sudden, when we are on camera, DK has forgotten that we went to school together. And DK's professional hat is on. Your professional hat needs to be on as well. So therefore, you have a responsibility as the organization to ensure that the preparation is in place. And it, preparation is a whole wash of things. And therefore, when anything happens, you are better prepared to deal with it and to come through it, um, let, you know, with, with few scars as possible. Because you'll get scars, it's a crisis. You will have some sort of trauma, but let's lessen that and lessen the risk involved so that the next time you'll be better prepared. And with that, we wanna say thank you very much, Lisa and Joseph, Managing Director of Reputation Management Caribbean. We've been speaking about crisis communication, what to do in a crisis, knowing that the crisis is going to come. 
On behalf of the entire TTT News team, this has been In Depth with me, DK Roster. Thank you so much for joining us.